Good afternoon everybody, I'm Shane Chartra here with another health supplement tip of the day. So oftentimes when I'm making videos over on TikTok, Instagram, or even here, as somebody that jumps in the comments, and no matter what supplement I'm talking about, they start to talk about the dangers of a certain supplement, that they're worried about it. They heard from a doctor on the internet, like kind of like I do, or um, you know, they just heard somebody's view on a specific supplement that was dangerous. So today, what I, I actually came across this article a while back, and it's called the uh, Seven Popular. I'm just going to read it off my phone here. Seven Popular Supplements That May Have Hidden Dangers. So it's it you know it's articles like this that people will read, and if you're uneducated in the supplement in supplement industry in general or supplements, um, you know they may scare you. So I'm going to give you kind of my view as to um, what you should look at with these specific supplements and how I would view it as somebody that works within the supplement industry. Okay, so um, seven popular supplements that may have hidden dangers. We'll go over the seven supplements real quick and I'm just going to kind of go over the heading of these seven supplements. So number one is vitamin D too much can harm your kidneys. Yes, too much can harm your kidneys, but how much are you taking? My goodness. Back many years ago, it was unheard of to take more than a thousand international units. So I remember, with, you know, people would buy a vitamin D that was 400 international units and a multivitamin and we'd look and we're like, I don't know, you may have more than a thousand. And then out of the blue, it was like people were taking these mega doses that were being recommended. A lot more research came out and uh, personally I'm taking 5,000 international units per day and that dose is actually proven to be very safe and effective. So I think if you're taking you know, above 10,000 international units per day for an extended period of time, it could harm your kidneys. But you're not just going to start to take vitamin D at two to 5,000 if you're a healthy person and develop kidney issues. So um, always do your research as to how much you can take. I never recommend mega dosing 5,000. You know, I worked my way up to that because I really looked into it. But yeah, 5,000 has been great and I've been getting all kinds of great health benefits. But when you start looking at these 50,000 international units once a week, I'm not a big fan of that and uh, I think that's a little bit dangerous, but that's my view. So vitamin D, um, harming your kidneys, I'd say don't worry about it too, too much. If you have kidney problems, check with your doctor or pharmacist. Um, okay, supplement number two, St. John's wort, avoid. It has drug interactions. Yes, this is correct. St. John's wort, very good for, uh, for mood improvement. Um, and here's the thing is if you are taking prescription medications, St. John's wort can be very dangerous. It can interact. So go to your pharmacist and, and check to see if St. John's wort will interact with the, uh, with the meds you're on. However, there's many alternatives to St. John's wort, things you can take to improve mood. The other thing with St. John's wort is it's summertime right now when I'm making this and if you spend too much time in the sun or in tanning beds, it makes you sensitive to sunlight. So you do have to be careful with that with St. John's Ward because you are much more sensitive. So um, be careful if you're out in the sun, be careful if you are um, on prescription medications. Supplement number three of these potential dangerous supplements. Oops, I passed it. Calcium. The excess may settle in your arteries. This is the big one. Yes, I would say if you're just taking calcium pills in really, really high doses, very dangerous, it could build up in your arteries, you could get kidney stones, you could get all kinds of things. That's why we always take calcium with magnesium. When you take it with magnesium, it metabolizes the calcium that way. There's less danger of it building up in your arteries. So never just take calcium on its own. Always take it with magnesium. Try and take it with vitamin D so you absorb that calcium. And that, like I said, that magnesium is going to help to metabolize it. Take it to where it needs to go in the body and that won't be in the arteries. So with calcium, if you have a parent or anything that's taking it or a grandparent, um, ask them if they're on magnesium. And if they're not, get them on magnesium. Number four, uh, multi, multivitamins and multiminerals. No substitute for a healthy diet. This one goes common sense. Let's just say this. Some people will just take a multivitamin, not eat food, and think that they're, they're going to, you know, get everything they need. A multivitamin is a, a supplement you would take on top of a 
healthy diet. Now I'm saying that because you can still kind of eat as you would, but the multivitamin and multimineral, they're there to fill the gaps of what you may be missing from your diet, specifically the nutrients. Our food isn't what it once was, and that's why a multivitamin and a multimineral is so important to fill the gaps. Diseases often come from deficiencies, and we get all kinds of health problems with uh, with having these deficiencies of vitamins and minerals and that's why we want to take a multivitamin or a multimineral along with our diet. So don't just take a multivitamin and not eat food or just eat ice cream all day. That's not a wise choice. I think that's what they're kind of getting at in this article. Um, supplement number five, fish oil supplements. Choose fish or flaxseed instead. Now I will say this, anytime you can get you know, your, your nutrients from food sources, yes, that would be a great idea, but everybody's on the go. Not many people know how much fish they should take. Not many people know how much flaxseed they should be taking every day to get the amount of therapeutic omega-3. So that's what they're saying is choose the food source over the actual supplements. And the danger that they're talking about is basically they're worried about the contamination of fish oils having a lot of heavy metals. Here in Canada, it's very regulated, um, you know, with the ones that have NPN numbers, and you get pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical grade pills, and those ensure that they don't have heavy metals in them, and they use smaller fish. That's what I do suggest. So sardine, mackerel, herring, anchovy, any of those that are kind of in a mix, they don't eat bigger fish, so there's less chance of heavy metals. So that's one of the big things you want to look for, is try not to uh, get a predatory fish, get these smaller fish that don't eat bigger fish, and then there's less chance of heavy metals. So when it comes to fish oils, they're extremely safe here in Canada. I don't know what part of the world you're in, and I don't know the regulation of the supplements in the part of the world that you're watching this. So. If you know if you're regulated or you're just ordering things online and they're just unreputable companies, that's dangerous. It's not the whole thing of fish oil being dangerous, but unregulated supplements. That's the danger. Supplement number six um, for these you know dangerous supplements: cava cava. Overuse can harm your liver. Overuse of anything can harm your liver. So don't take more than what is recommended on the bottle. Here in Canada, there's a brand called Natural Factors, and they make a Cava Cava in 250 milligrams, and I believe at 400 milligrams. I haven't seen that one in a while, but um, those are safe doses. And uh, you know, you don't want to take handfuls of this for long periods of time because it's very dangerous. So what's Cava Cava do? Cava Cava helps to relax you. It's very calming. It is not dangerous on your liver. If you do have a healthy liver, you're not going to just take Cava Cava and all of a sudden your liver is going to explode. But if you're taking these high doses or a non-regulated Cava Cava supplement, it may have different things in it that may harm you. So. Um, that's the biggest thing. Make sure you are taking regulated supplements. That's just, again, common sense. And don't overuse supplements. Don't just, you know, say, yeah, it's working great. It's abuse of anything can be bad. So Cava Cava, regular doses, they are fine. And our last supplement is soy isolate careful with estrogen. This is a big thing that used to come up a lot. Soy right now is not very big in here in Canada in health food stores, but people used to get um, soy protein powder and worry about excess estrogen. I'd say yes, you may want to worry about that if you're, you know, you're sensitive to estrogens, um, but soy in general, don't be too fearful of it if you are getting uh, fermented soy. Fermented soy is going to be much safer to take, but I don't know many people that are taking soy supplements anymore. But if you take a supplement and it's got like kind of a little bit of soy in the non-medical ingredients, I wouldn't worry about that too much. But if you're taking excess soy, um, you know, in a supplement, maybe a soy protein, several times a day for long periods of time, that may pose an issue. But most people, they don't have to worry about that. And again, I'm talking about healthy people here. People that aren't highly medicated for a specific uh, disorder. If you're doing that, you know, you always got to check with your doctor before you get on supplements or check with a naturopath. That's going to be the best thing that you can do but you know, for somebody like myself, I'm just looking, 
let's say I was new to supplements, I'm just looking to get in to improve my health with supplements. These supplements aren't technically dangerous. I know here in Canada, like I was saying with NPN numbers, um, very regulated. They're not going to just sell you something in a health food store. It's going to harm you. That's the biggest thing. So these seven supplements with potential dangers, I kind of laugh at these things because they just scare everybody. Um, you know, even, even labels on products right now, <clears throat> they were getting so strict in Canada that they'll even put the word blood pressure on there and people panic they won't buy a supplement anymore. But it's just a warning that if you are, you know, sensitive to high blood pressure, you always got to check with your doctor or pharmacist. Just common sense. So that's been my health supplement tip for the day. Hopefully you're not as scared of supplements. And if you have any questions, you can email me at shanespiltalk at yahoo.com or you can message me over on Instagram at shanespiltalk. And uh, those are great ways that you can contact me personally or leave something in the comments below. And I will try and get back to you as quickly as possible. I'm Shane Chartrand saying stay healthy, stay motivated, and I will see you guys in the next video. Talk to you later. Bye.